welcome. Today's lesson is on judging onions. So let's right get to it here. The first thing I'd like to talk about are the various types of onions. And as you can see on this chart, they just said there are five types. There's more than that, but these are the ones that you'll see a lot of. Shallots, white onion, red onion, sweet onion, and, and yellows. Uh, we're going to be just judging white, red, or yellow, but most are going to be judging yellow. As you can see, each one of them has a certain taste and texture and how they're used. And if you're really interested, obviously, uh, you can do a little research. But just the, on the ones that, that we uh, talk about in vegetable crops, uh, the wadden onion is probably the crunchiest of, an, uh, of them all. It has a really high um, water content, so it's really crisp and fresh tasting. It's probably the sharpest. And if you are cooking Mexican food, that's usually the onion of your choice. The red onions tend to be the most mild. Those ones you'll see the most in sandwiches, burgers, those kind of things. Whereas yellow, uh, yellow uh, onions tend to be extremely sharp and kind of mellow, especially when you uh, cook them. They kind of caramelize or get that kind of that caramel color uh, for any kind of sauteing. There's also other onions that are in our code that you'll need to know. Uh, leeks, green bunching onions. Uh, but also another onion that's really not in our code are uh, some of these um, pearl onions, baby onions. And uh, you can see those a little bit later. All right, we also want to talk about some common shapes because you'll see those today in uh, our judging class today. Uh, these onions, these happen to be sweet onions, the Walla Wallas, they tend to be flattened. They're kind of flat on the top and flat on the bottom. They almost look like a puck. Uh, so even though these shapes may not be true to type to some of, some of them, uh, a, a lot of shapes has to do with the variety or sometimes how they're shipped. Like our tor torpedo shape is elongated at both ends, uh, like some red onions and, and shallots. And then global, usually the whites and the yellows tend to be kind of more global or more round. Now let's take a look at some of the common defects. One you'll see today um, is sunburn. Um, and sunburn typically is when it's, well, out in the sun too long, just like we are, and it kind of bakes a little bit. And it's just right under that uh, papery scale and starts to uh, kind of uh, uh, start to photosynthesize because it is, uh, you know, bulbs, uh, onions are bulbs, and they have these layers, and those layers are called scales. And then they have this papery um, scale around it, and they have the fleshy um uh, the fleshy scales right underneath it. It's the fleshy scales that it, if they get too much sun, they start to break down and they, there's, it, there tends to be destruction of some of the tissue. And, and it's really not sunburn until it's turned green. <coughs> Excuse me, a medium green to dark green. We also have, a, uh, and you've probably seen these before, especially on onions that have come out of uh, either weather conditions or been po poorly um, stored is black mold. It's the powdery substance. Typically, it's in the uh, papery scales, and that's not too much of a of a problem. But if it gets to be like somewhere in the neighborhood of 40, 50 percent, uh, then we have issues because it, it when it gets in between the papery scales and the fleshy scales, then there there could be some uh, vector for some kind of mold, like for this one that I'm showing you, which is gray mold. Uh, gray mold um, typically comes in through the neck or the wick. And you'll see kind of a black or, or grayish color at the neck. And if you cut it open, this is what it looks like. And then we also have sprouting. Sprouting looks kind of benign, but it's it's using up all the stored resources that we eat. So it tends to get soft. It starts to get wrinkled. The shelf life of shelf life goes down, and it's called sprouting. If you have more than half an inch, it's a significant defect. So let's go ahead and get started with a general inspection. And I, I put a few notes that, plus a, a scorecard. You, that scorecard is really, really important. You have to make sure you understand what condition is, uniformity, quality, trinity type and size. Make sure you have that down. And for those of you just beginning, use those terms uh, quite a bit. On general inspection on number one, you'll notice it's, pro it's, it's excellent in its condition. Very tight, smooth, bright uh, wrapper leaves or, or papery scales. You can see on this plate right here, they're very, very uniform. They're very true to type. They're fresh. They're clean. They're crisp. And, of course, uh, they meet the market standards uh, for size, shape, and color.
If we go to number two, uh, number two um, is, is very close or very similar to that. Uh, you'll notice it has good uniformity, as this uh, picture shows. It, too, is a little clean, but not as clean as, as the first one. There is some there is some water spotting, which isn't an issue. Um, but if you look at their, their size and their shape, they're also relatively uniform, not as good as, as the first one. So if we go on to sample number three. Now, like, again, I'm going through this really fast because I teach my students when you first get in the room to look at them, just make a quick assessment so that you can get an idea like on this one. If you look at number three in particular, you'll notice that it's kind of kind of ruffled. It, it doesn't it lacks uniformity. It lacks condition because of that that uh, soft rod on that one. Also, if you take a look, one's flattened, one's torpedoed, one's global. So there's a lot of issues going on with that uh, plate. Lacks uniformity, lacks condition. Probably the worst condition in the class today, maybe. Let's look at, look at number four. Under general inspection, you'll know that it lacks uh, any kind of, well, it lacks some condition. Uh, doesn't have a lot of uniformity, but three of them are very uniform. This this one that doesn't have that papery uh, scales on it, it has sunburn. Uh, and it's just starting to turn green, so it's kind of a medium green. So it's still sellable. It still should be on the retailer showcase. It's just going to be as cuttable and yield as much as the other um, uh, maybe plates above it. But this plate has three good ones in it and one, well, not so good in it. So let's compare them. So I, I think one and two are very, very close together. So we're going to compare those first. And then what I'm going to do is look at three and four and compare those two. And I think that you'll uh, be able to see that to split fairly quickly. So we're going to look at sample number one. Sample one, uh, number one is we already know. Now at this particular point, when I compare them, I'm really trying to get more a little bit more detail in my descriptions. So um, if you can see there, it's excellent condition. It's very clean. It's uniform in its size, shape, and color. Mostly free uh, free from blemishes. Has excellent eye appeal. It should have a high yield for the consumer. Highly cuttable. Should have a lot of edible proportion for the consumer as they take it home with them. Sample number two is also, as you can see from the pictures here, also is in pretty good condition. It's a little flattened on one of them, and it isn't quite global on another. Uh, so this one is just a little bit, in my opinion, a little less um, sellable, sellable um, uh, for the consumer. Uh, it, it has some loose papery scales on it, and it's Probably not as uniform as our, our first place one, so the shipping it might be of some concern. So let's go to uh, three and four now. This is where it gets uh, kind of tricky, so uh, hang on here. A sample three it ha is, is very poor in condition. Um, you'll notice that one of them has black, uh, um, excuse me, soft rot as well as or black rot with mildew on it. It lacks any kind of uniformity in its size, shape, and color. Uh, you got some big ones, you got a small one, you got a torpedoed one, and then this one here. As you can see in this one, you can see the kind of the brown underneath the tissue. We have destruction of tissue. And when you have destruction of tissue, uh, then it, it should be coming off the retailer showcase and you'll, you'll lose some of your profitability and your yield. And, of course, this one uh, also has a mildew. That's the black dots right on the uh, outside part of the, of the skin. Now we go to number four. Number four, actually, three of them are pretty good. A little on the small side, but I think three of the... the um, Samples in on that plate are, are, are very uniform, very shiny, very uh, I, I think uh, are are well yield high. But on this one right here, uh, that's the one that has sunburn on it, starting to turn green. We have uh, some issues with that, but it's still not destruct destroying any of the tissue like it is in sample number three. So uh, let's get going to on the reasons, and I'll tell you why I put them the way I did. Sir, I place this class of yellow onions in the order of one, two, four, and three. Plate number one, I um, put first today. Primarily, I think this is the most uh, best conditioned, most uh, mostly uniform in, in the class today. I, I think it's very crisp. It's fresh. Uh, it's definitely going to be a high yielder for the for the uh, retailer. I believe that this particular one is going to have the highest cutability, highest yield, and also satisfy the, the market needs in all regards. In, in second place today, I put plate number two. Plate number two was also um, was in good condition, uh, but I placed it in second primarily because it lacked uniformity in its size and also in its shape. 
It too, I think, is going to yield uh, very high in its cutability. I think it's going to yield a lot for the consumer as well as the retailer. But I have some issues with some of the, the with one of them that's flattened. One of them is a little elongated um, at the root end. But th that's kind of minor, and that's uh, why I placed it in second place, just slightly below plate number one. In my bottom pair today, I put plate number four in third place. Plate number uh, four uh, lacked the condition and the uniformity you want to see in today's market. I, if I were to improve this particular plate, I, I would first of all make sure that, um, that the one that was sunburnt, well, it wasn't sunburnt, uh, but also kind of tightened up and more a little bit more global, a little bit smaller to, to match the other ones in this class today. However, I had to place it in third because there was no d destruction of, of, of tissues um, in the scales because and sample number three, I put in fourth and last place. Sample or plate number three, I think w was by far the uh, the least conditioned in the class today. It lacks uniformity, uh, and but most of all because of it has uh, one of them has soft rot and mildew. And if you leave uh, too many of those in the retailer showcase, uh, you might it might become a vector for disease, and that should be gotten rid of. So some of your profitability goes goes down the tubes because you uh, have something like that. Well, for these reasons, I place this uh, class of yellow onions one, two, four, and three. Well, I hope this has helped you uh, judge onions, and we'll see you at the next contest. Thank you very much. Bye.